All right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever it is, wherever you are at the moment. Welcome to today's presentation from DBA Fundamentals, Azure SQL Database and Managed Instance versus On-Premise. Today we have Jose giving a great presentation on, uh, on this. Uh, today is May 4th, 2021. As you see on the right side of your screen, we have various ways to get hold of us at DBA Fundamentals. On the top right, you'll see the three co-leaders of the present of the group: uh, Steve Cantrell, Shane O'Neill, and myself, Kevin Wilkie, and our Twitter handles. In case you would like to get in touch with us, if you can't get in touch with us on DBA Fundamentals itself, we have various social media. Um, accounts that you can connect to us with. First off is Meetup, that everyone here should have uh, connected to us as, uh, just so we can do our wonderful presentations. You can also reach out to us on our website at dbafund.org, where you can see all of the upcoming presentations as well as our archive of past presentations. We also have the dbafuntube.com where you can watch our YouTube presentations where we have all of them linked at. Uh, you can also reach out to us on Twitter at dbafun, our Slack channel, and our LinkedIn group where we attempt to put as many um, reminders and other uh, things about SQL Server and any other things that DBAs really need to know. As you remember, it's not just um, SQL Server anymore. It truly is uh, almost all DBA um, groups of uh, things that we want to talk about. Uh, in a few months, I believe, I have a friend of mine giving a presentation on NoSQL. So please, if you haven't signed up for that, be sure to do it today so you can learn more about uh, NoSQL and how it can be used in the um, in your environment. So with that, Please remember that um, all, all sessions are recorded and this will be available usually within two, one or two days. Uh, be sure to check us out on dbafuntube.com. And with that, we go to our friend Jose. Here is his wonderful bio. And I am sure he'd love to start our wonderful presentation. So with that, I give it away to Jose. Thank you so much, Kevin. Thank you so much, and thank you so much for attending this session, uh, Azure SQL DB Managed Instance versus On-Premises. Uh, as uh, Kevin mentioned before, I'm, my name is Jose Manuel Jurado. I'm from Spain. I'm based in Madrid. Uh, I'll say you're not sharing if you're trying to. Uh, sorry. No worries. Sorry. Let me see. One there we go. Stop. Yeah, one second. I'm going to share my desktop. One second first. Yes, that's great. Okay, perfect. Okay. Um, so, so, my name is Jose Manuel Prado. I mentioned before, I'm, I've been working for Microsoft for more than 10 years. Uh, I'm support, uh, right now, I'm supporting the, mainly the Azure SQL database and managed instance. But in the past, uh, I did my support in MySQL, MariaDB. Uh, process, etc. Previously, I was working on, with SQL Server Call, with analysis services, etc. So I am used to speak in several in several uh, events, uh, public and uh, uh, internal uh, events, and also I worked previously as a DBA, developer, IT manager, many things, many things. So um, let me one second is here, yeah. Let's, let's start with, uh, let's get started about the, the, the presentation. So, uh, in, in many conversations that uh, that I have, uh, uh, it's, I, I heard many, many conversations about, oh, the, the role of the DVA chains, I'm going to to, to lose my, my job because uh, Azure, the cloud will be, uh, we are not going to do. We are not going to be there, okay? So because we don't have any option, because everything will be automatic, will run in automatic way. The, this is not true, okay? For the reason, I would like to share with you several 
how it uh, has my role change uh, uh, as a DVA, for example, uh, in this uh, in during when I let's say move to Azure. Okay, for the reason uh, we have uh, at least I think that we have uh, four roles. One is decision maker because many things. Uh, it's basically is we need to decide what is the best, the best uh, platform for us, because uh, when we are moving to the to the cloud, let's say Azure, uh, Azure uh, Amazon, etc. At the end, you need to know or you need to understand what is the best uh, the best platform. For the reason, we are going to cover several details about it. Okay, when you are moving to uh, to the cloud, other things about when you want to migrate the data. Do you know what is the platform that you are going to know? But after it, you need to know. You need to know how you are going to migrate the data. As as a DVA, you need to know what is the tools, what is the the best solution for you. For example, offline, online, etc. Also, that I will like. We are going to spend all the time, all the most of my time for this presentation will be as a DVA. What is my main role? For example, your main role working in as a DVA in Azure. What is the tools that we have? What is the option that we have, etc. And finally, uh, and other is, is very important is why not to to work in a hybrid environment because not just only you need to use Azure. We have many situations that you could work with part of the Azure. Okay, for example, have uh, the backup system or have an, another nodes in your always on environment that could be another mechanisms in your disaster recovery on your hybrid. So. Let's start uh, about uh, how to decide what is the the the, uh, the best option that we have. So most probably, when you start, uh, when you are working as a DVA and you receive the let's say the recommendations or the order or the instructions from your boss, okay, we need to move to Azure. We have many questions, many questions about uh, what is the options that we have, what is the features that we have, right, and how to migrate the data. Okay, in offline, etc. So, for this reason, it's very important when you are working, when you are going to work in in in, uh, in national environment, it's to know what is the main changes that we have when we are using on premises and we are using Azure. For example, right now you know that in on premises you have different versions, different uh, platform that you could use. Using SQL Server, let's say in Linux, uh, let's say uh, in Windows, using APS, etc. That you know that you need to manage, let's say everything. But when you move to Azure, you are going to have two flavors. The main one is infrastructure as a services and platform as a services. Okay, uh, infrastructure as a services means that you are going to have uh, again. In the same scenario, you are going to have Linux and Windows, and also you are going to have Docker. But you need uh, to know that right now, one of the part of this uh, of this uh, of these uh, main roles or main changes that we have is about this. So right now, you need to pay attention. Let's say about the operating system, middleware, runtime, your data, and your application. The rest, uh, uh, in this case, Azure will have the, the uh, we have the options in order to manage all these things. Okay, so at the end, uh, uh, the most important thing is that there is no needed to, let's say, order, let's say, the, the hardware, let's say, the iron, let's say, about the number of uh, vCores, the number of the storage. We are going to specify in the portal how to create this or how to instruct the creation of these servers. And you are going to manage your uh, service packs, you are going to manage your code, you are going to manage uh, everything the SQL Server instance. Normally, this IS environment is, let's say, is more, it's a 100 compatibility when you are moving to Microsoft from on-premises to uh, to Azure. Other flavors that we have is platform as a services. What that mean that uh, what that mean? In platform as a services, we have three different uh, uh, flavors that uh, it's called SQL database. Manage instance uh, synapse. Okay, depending that you need, we are going to cover several details about it. But depending on you need, you need to choose. I would like to use SQL database. I would like to manage instance of synapse. Let's say that right now our customer are moving uh, 
right now to Manat's instance because Manat's instance is right now one of the uh, very similar between uh, in terms of on premises uh, how you think about uh, the SQL instance. Okay, because in Manat's instance, for example, you have a SQL Survey instance that you could specify at least, or you could create at least 100 databases. Okay, and you could create this one. Uh, also, it's a SQL database. A SQL database. Let's say that is when it's database oriented. Let's say that is when you want to create one database and apply all the resources or uh, specific resources to your database. Okay, and Synapse is another thing that we have when we are talking about, for example, in terms of analytics. It's, for example, Synapse, we have uh, the, the main uh, topology, the main technology that we have behind Synapse is you have 60 machines right now that they could run in a parallel way, for example, that means that every time that you run a query, you are going to have, as a maximum, a 16 servers um, uh, ready in order to attend this query. Okay? So, other things that you have, it's about that you don't need to install any service pack, uh, you, don't, you don't need to take care about an operating system, etc. Okay? Just only you need to apply, uh, you need to put focus about your data and your applications. For sure, uh, in, in other technology, for example, we have the similar uh, platforms and services for MySQL and, and Prozcus. So other things that is very important when we are, uh, uh, we, we know right now the platform, right? So the most important thing, it's very important a DVA, it's uh, about the DVAs, identify, for example, identify the requirements. It's very important because we saw many situations that the customer migrated data to, C to SQL Azure and they want to have the same performance. They want to have everything. And uh, sometimes we have the surprise that we don't, it's, it's not 100% 100 compatible or they have many problems. For two reason, one of the best things that we have is try to identify the requirements, okay? Other things that when you are migrating as a DVA is to, uh, let's say, to uh, create analysis about the risk analysis. It's, okay, what is the compatibility that I have? It's, it's possible to migrate, for example, to SQL Server 2008 to uh, Azure SQL Database. Uh, uh, if I have, uh, because it's possible to migrate to DTUs, etc. It's very important to identify these parts, okay, and try to understand what that means. Okay, other things about is the storage best practice. One of the best, the, the almost issue always that we have in on premises, in, uh, in, in, platform, in platform as a service, it's for example, is the storage. It's very important to understand. We are going to cover, we are going to cover this, uh, this set of things uh, in, the, in the next slides. So, um, other things is about the application. We are Going to show, we are going to show you several topics uh, about the best practice about the application. Because right now, you are not alone, let's say. So you are not a DVA, you are a DVA, but you are going to work with your developers. Okay? So we are going to cover several topics that you need to be sure that the application has implemented already these options. Because if not, most probably you need to increase the cost uh, in your platform, or uh, um, or you are going to have several problems in terms of connectivity, performance, etc. Finally, uh, it's important about the budget. When you decide between uh, infrastructure as a services or platform as a services, you need to think about about the direct cost. For example, in infrastructure as a services, I need to in order to have an always on environment, two machines. I need at the end, I need two machines. But if I create in platform services, I need just only to create the database because when you create a database or when you create the managed instance, at the end we are going to have three machines running in an always on environment. Okay. So for the reason, for example, the direct cost is you need to double uh, the, the the platform or, uh, for example, the backups where I'm going to save the backups, for example, in another storage. And the most important thing for me is about testing. So I have learned. Uh, after 10 years, uh, uh, four years uh, working in, in, in Azure, it's very important to run the connectivity, uh, run the connectivity, perform an application. It's very, very important, okay, about it.
So, so uh, for, for example, this is the the, uh, the, the learnings uh, when, when you want to, to for example, uh, when you want uh, to migrate to Azure, you need to think about okay, what is the best for me? It's IaaS or uh, platform as a services. In this case, for example, when you have, uh, you need to use third-party tools. You need to install it the server, third-party tools, or you need. And 100% uh, compatibility in terms of CLR, or uh, you need to use DTC. In this case, for sure, I think that you need to go, you need to go to, or you need to use infrastructure services. For sure, you could use platform as a services running some workloads, so workaround, sorry. But it's important, it's important about if you want to migrate the data as soon as possible without, um, without having too much problems in this part. Is, is this this? So, so when, when I, I need to go to to, to platform, platform, what is the best things that we have in, in terms of pla uh, in terms of platform, a uh, platform as a services? It's about, for example, the elasticity. Elasticity means that I could uh, uh, increase the, the resources uh, anytime. So I could, for example, if I need more CPU, I need more uh, IO. In this case, I need to move to another uh, database here, and I'm going to have during no uh, more than 30 seconds all the connection will be will be dropped. But at the end, I'm going to have, let's say, in less one hour, depending on the size of the database, etc. Uh, you have the opportunity to move your database different in, in uh, with the, uh, with different uh, database tiers. Okay, and also for 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 sure about the threat detection that is other things that is very important, uh, for example, uh, about to detect uh, different threats. And finally, also SQL diagnostics. But let me show you uh, at the, uh, in the presentation later about how works uh, everything about it. So, for, as I mentioned before, so if you want to use PaaS and you have some doubts about uh, for example, my application uh, is certified as to use SQL Server 2008 R2. But in Azure, uh, Azure Platform Services, we have the last version, let's say 2019. You could, choose, you could choose or you could use this one. Basically, you need to change the compatibility level, for example. Or uh, my database is half, I don't know, 200 terabytes of data. You could use this one. Uh, in, in this case, you need to split the data in different databases. Okay? Or, for example, I need to connect to another database. Uh, using uh, within the same connection, you could use cross database query. So at the end, you have workarounds. Okay, depending on the cost for the reason, it's very important when you are thinking about it. Is what is the platform that I need to choose? Okay, and what is the best for me as a DBA? Okay. So, in summary, if you want to have the full control and capabilities in your SQL Server instance, the best thing is to go to Azure, Azure SQL, uh, uh, sorry, SQL, SQL Server on VMs, VMs, okay? Because you are going to have the access to the operating system, uh, all the patches, uh, the, the collocation, the application will be in the same location of the services, etc. But if you want uh, to use, for example, there is no need to have, uh, for example, a level access to operating system. In this case, you could use a managed instance. As I mentioned before, for example, you could use uh, that you restore, you could choose, or you could you have the options in order to run uh, queries um, uh, among the different databases you have uh, in your data, uh, in your uh, managed instance instance, or you could use linked server, you could use service broker, SQL agent, or uh, CLR or uh, machine learning services. Okay, so in this case, if you don't need access, for example, to a system. You could choose a managed instance, as I mentioned before, and you are going to have at least the 99% of the options that you have in on-premises. And finally, you have other options is about database. Okay, database basically, it's a, as I mentioned before, is database scope. So that means that, for example, your application is connected just only one single database, and in this case, you don't need to use SQL agent, you don't need to use the native restore, etc. In this case, you could use uh, the Azure SQL database and you have all the options already 
using the last version of the SQL Server. So this is the part that is very important as a DBA in our role. So let's go to the next section about the migrations. Uh, migrations, it's about uh, what is the tool, the best tool for me in order to migrate the data, okay? So for two reasons, right now, we have many tools uh, in order to run, in order to uh, uh, perform, let's say, uh, the migration. So right now, uh, depending, uh, let's say, what is the your window maintains that you have, okay? In this case, for example, if you don't have any window maintains and you want to perform an online migration, the best solution for you is to use Azure Data Migration Services. Okay, Azure Data Migration Services, it's very simple. The, at the beginning, is uh, when you configure everything, you are going to run a backup, and after it, every modification that you are going to have in your on-premise environment will be automatically sent, let's say, uh, to to uh, a managed instance or SQL, uh, SQL Azure if you decide to go to the database, okay, and you are going to have this. At the end, when you finish everything, everything is already, you could uh, perform the operation that is called cut over, that in this part, after the last transaction was, uh, was applied in, in the in managed instance of your SQL database, uh, you are going to uh, have two different environments, on-premises and uh, SQL database. So other option that you have in the migration is to run a team backup. For example, I have a Windows maintained. I have two hours, one hour. Okay, you could run and a team backup and restore this, for example, in Banach instance. This is or you, if you choose uh, infrastructure as a services. And unfortunately, there is not possible to use in Azure SQL database. And in this case, you need to uh, use an alternative tool that is called Backpack and Duckpack. Basically, Backpack and Duckpack is no more than an exported process for the database, okay, that you are going to have a six file with the station Backpack that contains all the data and all the structure that you have in your database. Let's say tables, let's say uh, schemas, let's say views, etc. Other customers, other customers that are using, for example, is transactional replication because they want to migrate uh, the wall or just only part of the tables. For example, they think, okay, I would like to, uh, to have uh, the options to several customers to read the data uh, in read only, for example, mode in Azure because we have an application that is publishing several uh, uh, financial reports. For example, okay, you could use also the transactional replications, or uh, for example, other tools that you have is log shipping. Right now, also, uh, you could um, use log shipping to transmit the data or send the data from your premises to also uh, to manage instance, or for example, uh, database mirroring using uh, uh, the Azure VMs. Finally, I would like to talk about Azure, uh, Azure Data, uh, data, uh, data Sync. This is other tool. Uh, we have many, many questions here in support about, okay, I have on-premises, I have Azure VMs, or I have uh, Azure SQL Database, but what happens if I want to have my core business in on-premises, in my office, but I would like to, uh, for example, to publish another application that they are doing some orders, I don't know, because we are selling something, but I would like that every time that we have any new cell, try to automatically uh, 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 update the database that I have in on-premises. In this case, Azure Data, uh, Azure, uh, Data Sync is another tool that you have, okay, because Azure Data Sync is one tool that you have in order to, uh, let's say, send the data from premises to Azure or to Azure to on premises, or for example, you could use in another uh, in another tool, for example, SQL to SQL, uh, Azure, etc. And finally, you could use, for example, uh, we have other customers that are there using SQL uh, SQL Server integration services. And the end is in the similar way that we have uh, nowadays uh, about uh, how 
use the, the, the different packets that we have in integration services. Okay, for the reason, it's very important to know this option because how to migrate the data is depending on, uh, as I mentioned before in the beginning, is the window maintains, uh, what is the time that I have, uh, the techniques. Uh, for example, if I want to test something before moving the data, you could use the replication, etc. Okay? So, once we have this, this is the most important thing. Uh, about it, we are going to talk about Azure DVA. I'm going to reduce the speed, okay? And I would like to share with you what is the main duties that we have about Azure SQL Database. Okay, so as you can see in this table, uh, I have uh, I split in three te uh, in three technologies and also in different features. Okay, for example. When I want to have a disaster recovery, what is the option that I have uh, in, for example, in SQL database? Well, in SQL database, uh, one thing that you need to, to that you need to know is uh, every server that we have, uh, for example, in West Europe, we are going to have a copy in North Europe. Okay, in the similar way, if we have SQS or West US, and the end, we are going to have at least one server that is paired with another one, okay? But if you want to think about your disaster recovery, you have several things that is called your restore. What does it mean, your restore? Your restore means that suppose that something happened in the US, okay? Uh, we have bomb or something like this. There is not possible to restore anything. There is not possible to get access to your, uh, to your database or your managed instance, and then you could use one thing that is called you restore that you are going to restore the data uh, from the data center that is paired with another one. In this case, it's US 1, 2, or West Europe. For example, in, uh, in Europe, we have West, uh, West Europe with North Europe. In the similar way, you could use uh, this in managed instance, but for example, on premises, you need to implement this by yourself, okay? This is one of the advantage that we have right now in Azure SQL Database. This is automatically made. So at the end, you could, uh, if every time that you create one, uh, one SQL Database or you create one managed instance and you specify that, okay, my backups will be automatically uh, your, or your backup, let's say, in another region, automatically we are going to have this backup and we are going to place this backup in, in another, another, uh, in another uh, data, data center. When you're thinking about high ability, what is the option that I have as a DVA in my role in order to choose, uh, in order to work with SQL database? Well, you know, in on premise says you have several things. You have cluster, you have always on, you have transaction replication, we could think about it, this high ability. Well, it's, we could think about it, but in, in Azure SQL database, for example, you have your replication. What does mean your replication? Your replication means that you could uh, send the data, uh, you, you are going to have at least, uh, you could have at least four copies of the data around the globe. So, for example, suppose that you are based in SUS and you are going to have four copies of the data, for example, in London, in Madrid, for example, in another country that you want. Also, it's very important to know that you could have another four replicas of, a, of these four replicas. So, at the end, you could have 16 copies of the data uh, around the globe, and these 16 copies of the data is uh, or will be in great only mode. So, you could split right now. Uh, beside the high, high ability, you, you could also, also uh, to use uh, as, for, 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 for example, for your reporting services or uh, for, uh, for another application that needs just only to read, to read the data. Other, other options that we have is transparent file over group. More or less, it's always on uh, in groups, ability groups. And the end is very similar. So uh, at the end, you are going to have uh, an uh, entry point, let's say, a listener that this listener, you are going to have two servers located in, in two different data centers, and you are going to connect to this listener. And the end is very, uh, is pretty much the same. So if you run the failover process, you are going to have another server, and that's all, okay? 
in this similar way you have a uh, manatee. So at the end, what what is the best thing for us in terms of the role in our role? And the end to create this transparent file over will be more easy for us because basically you need to specify using power cell, using the portal, okay, this is my server, please uh, choose these databases in order to run uh, this follower group and we are going to have this. That not means that when you are doing this, everything is uh, everything will work will be work perfectly without any problem. No. So at the end, also my recommendation is to add some agents or some alerts. For example, when we have some lag between uh, the transmission of the data between the primary and the secondary, right? But at the end, this will make more easy for us in order to have this. Other option that we have that we are going to cover in the next slide is about son redundant. Uh, what that means, son redundant? Son redundant means that we are going to split or three copies of, of, uh, of a server that is part of the always on in different zones of the data center. So every zone that we have in Azure will have uh, the, uh, the independent uh, power electricity, uh, eye conditioner, etc. So at the end is something happening in one area, and the end we are going to have in another area we are going to have or soon we are going to have or data uh, without uh, any any other problems. And finally, one thing that I would like to mention is the disaster recovery uh, itself. So, so it's very important to know that every time that you create one SQL Server database, you are going to have three copies of the data. So automatically, we are going to run this uh, always on environment for you for this database, or we are going to, uh, to do the same for your managed instance. Okay. So that's mean that at the end, without uh, running multiple uh, multiple commands or to configure everything about the ports, etc., you are going to have this uh, option available every time that you create one database for us. We are going to have more easy life, let's say, because there, there is not needed to do uh, too much things in terms of uh, the, uh, in running the same data center. Okay. And for sure. In terms of managed instance, you could use the transaction replication in order to have another managed instance or another SQL Server on premises or another uh, SQL Azure database in order to replicate the data. So suppose there's following scenario. I would like to use managed instance, but I would like to have in my backup another SQL on premises. In this case, basically, I need to uh, uh, configure the transaction replication in managed instance and the subscriber will be my uh, my SQL on premises. Or whichever we could change the the, the 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 way in this in this part. For the reason we are going to have as always as I mentioned before, it's very important as part of a role is to review these things to uh, to have an alert that if something happened to react in in if something happening in, in your environment. Other things that is very important is very important about is monitoring. Okay, it's very important uh, because this is the the basic thing or the most important thing that we have right now in Azure as a DVA in your role as uh, as a DVA, as a DVA is monitoring. For the reason, I'm going to show you several examples how to use the portal, how to use the alerts. Uh, uh, for, example, uh, for example, if something happened, my CPU is very high, I'm going to receive an, an email or an alert about, okay, something happened with this database, with this managed instance. Also, uh, I could create something, for example, to scale up the server automatically, uh, depending on several details. We are, I'm going to show you the metrics, I'm going to show you uh, diagnostics, social health, and um, one thing that is very important as a DVA, yes, we need to use the maintenance plan, okay? Because uh, we have many conversations with uh, customers say, okay, no, I put my database here in Azure database, and I think that uh, you are going to run the updated statistics automatically or my rebuild indexes automatically. No, we are not going to do it. We are going to. Uh, in terms of performance that I'm going to cover in the next uh, in the next point, but it's very important to have the maintenance plan. So at the end, the same script that you have in your SQL on-premises 
most probably, most probably you, are going, you are going to use the same, the same humanity, humanity instance or in your SQL in your SQL, SQL database. database. Okay. Uh, well, other things that we have about performance, as I mentioned before, we have alerts. We are going to show you right now how was a performance overview, what is a performance recommendation. Automatically, uh, in SQL database, we are running a special, uh, special process okay, that we are using uh, machine learning. Uh, that after, let's say, 24 or 48, uh, 48 uh, hours, we are going to analyze the workload that you have in your database. And we are going to uh, uh, share with you, uh, the, for example, the recommendations that, for example, to create a new index, drop a new index. Uh, something happened with this query that we need to use the, the most uh, optimal uh, um, execution, execution plan, plan. Or, you have or you have some problems, problems in terms of uh, the, uh, the queries that, that you are running. Okay, okay. it's, it's very important about it. Okay, okay. For, sure, for sure, we are going to use a uh, query data store, store because this is a tool that we are using in all, all the versions that we have in SQL database. And uh, uh, for example, uh, we, have we have other other options that uh, that we have about. Uh, uh, PSD app, if you know, uh, SQL Nexus, Data Studio, uh, uh, SQL 7 Management Studio, etc. One thing that I would like to stop here is uh, in these two things, about sharding and uh, scale up, scale down. What that means sharding in, in SQL database? Well, uh, at the beginning, in on premises, we thought that, okay, if I have a server with a lot of CPU, the best storage, storage that is very uh, the, the is very expensive, but I'm sure that I'm going to have the best performance. But uh, but in this case, yes, you are going to have the best, but at the end is underestimated because most probably uh, one database. Uh, you are not one using database one database in your SQL Server instance for uh, just only one or two hours per day, for example, or in just only several uh, spike moments or uh, several details. Uh, or, for example, uh, you think that, okay, I'm going to create one single table for all the customers that we have, for all the sales that we have uh, in just only one single table. Uh, at the end, uh, when you need to run a backup, when you run uh, 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 update the statistics of the building indexes and the end is taking too much time. You could use the partition for sure, but at the end it's taking too much time. And at the end, uh, it's you have uh, one table that contains a lot of data. In Azure SQL database, another perspective that we have is, for example, what happens if I create one table, sorry, one database per customer? And depending on the usage that we have per customer, for example, I'm going to choose the database tier and the end the cost that I'm going to have per database. But without, uh, for example, without impacting in my in my application. In this part, we have one thing that is called sharding. Sharding is not more than uh, to have a distribution of your customers, for example, or any other entity in different databases, but your application will use one framework that, for example, instead of specify, okay, I would like to connect to this database. No, you need to instruct, I would like to connect to this entities of this customer. And automatically, SQL Server or this, this uh, framework will connect automatically with the database that you have with this. So at the end, what is the best advantage? At the end, is you are going to save you money because most probably there is no need to use uh, the, the, the highest uh, database tier that we have for uh, the database, and you're going to reduce also the backup, maintains plan, etc. And finally, as I mentioned before, I'm going to explain in the in the next slides. It's about the process to scale up, scale down. Other things is about the integration. I mentioned before about all these things, and also other things that you are going to receive a lot of questions from from the CIO, CIO, uh, security team, etc. It's about the security. How secure is Azure SQL database, or 
eh, Manatzitsas of VMs, etc. And then you are going to have more or less, you are going to have the same the same things that you have in on premise. You are going to have one thing that is called auditing, that more or less is the same that you have in terms of SQL Server Profiler. You are going to have the query, connections, logging, etc. Saving this file in one uh, uh, storage. Uh, you are going to have an additional thing that is called threat detection. Uh, that threat detections. Uh, let's say that it's the mechanism that we have in order to protect the connection. Suppose that uh, one hacker wants to connect to your server using different uh, uh, user and password, or they uh, they want to use the SQL injection, etc. Uh, every time that you try to connect to the SQL, uh, at the end you are going to connect one thing that is called uh, in Azure that is called gateway. You are not you are not going to have a direct connection to your server. All the connections that the first connection that you are going to have is always using a, a, a gateway. Okay, this gateway is it's in front of the connection. They are, uh, this gateway will validate the connection, will analyze. The user, password, we analyze, we analyze the SQL injection, etc. Et and and if everything is fine, a, 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 the, the gateway allows you to connect to the real, uh, the real server, server that you have. Okay. okay. So it's very so important, important about about, uh, uh, about it. Other things that we have is vulnerability uh, assessment, data discovery that we have in the similar way. Uh, we have TLS, you could specify what is the, uh, the, security, uh, the security that you want or the version that you want to use, and also the TD, the data transfer encryption. So, in, in terms of SQL, in a similar way that you have in managed instance on on premises, you could use uh, TD in terms of encrypted data. You could use one encryption, uh, that one certificate that we have in Azure, or uh, another that you have uh, from uh, your certificate using Keyboard. Okay. So, other things about the backup, as I mentioned before, uh, in order to run the backup. Right now, let's say that there is no needed to take care of, of about the backup, about the backup okay, okay, in terms of SQL, SQL Azure, because automatically we are going to, run, uh, to uh, this backup for you. What is the best what practice at DVA? My suggestion is time to time, try to restore the data, but if everything works well, uh, for sure that we have the we have the 100 guarantee, 100 percent of the guarantee that the backup is running well. But sometimes, in duty, let's say, it's very important to time to time to restore to restore the data. Uh, for, example, for example, in managed instance, managed in managed instance, instance we, have we have the same, uh, but, uh, but also you could use uh, uh, the native backup. backup. So you could run the backup database command in order to have the backup in another uh, database, database in another in another database. In a, sorry, in another managed instance. Okay. okay. Uh, I like this option because at the end, as, as a DVA, we are going to going to uh, one of the best concerns that we have is about high ability that we have already implemented in Azure, and in terms of backup, uh, we are going to have uh, 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 the backup already implemented, not just only a backup in terms of retention about 35 days, it's also about uh, up to 10 years, okay? Uh, but it's very important, as, uh, in, in terms of, to summarize these things, it's about what is my duty? My duty is, as a DVA, it's very important about to monitor. Okay, configure correctly. You have a your high ability, uh, high ability system or implementation. Have and try to use all the tools that we have in order to monitor the uh, your database and also in terms of performance. This is the part, the most funny part or the most important part that we have right now, is if you reduce the resource usage that you have, that you, have you, are you are going to pay less. Okay. okay? We, have we have customers say, okay, okay I'm going to use uh, one, server one server with 80 V cores because, uh, because I need all the power. All the power. But, why? but why? Why, why you are going to spend this money? But if you DVA review the queries, review uh, the typical things about the conversion implicit or the missing indexes or uh, the execution plan, uh, parameter sniffing, many things, and the end, you don't need to use it. Much part you need to use 4B cores, and you are going to pay less, and you have more money for, for your business, okay? For the reason, in terms of summary, this is the 
the typical things that we are going to have as a DVA, okay, in this role, okay. I would like we have for we have 50 minutes, but I would like to to cover the the demo. This is one thing that is very important about the rate scale. Uh, let, me uh, let me explain one, one thing about the red scale. So, so beside, beside the geo-replication, geo beside, beside the transparent, the transparent over that all the replicas, replicas will be red in red mode, every time, every time that you create one, one, uh, one database or managed instance in terms of this critical, critical or initial SQL database, database, you use premium or hybrid scale, and then you're going to have the opportunity to connect directly one of these replicas. So what does that mean? That means that for the reporting services that we have, if I have implemented, for example, the U replication, I'm going to have the opportunity to connect to the one of the replicas of the U replication, another one will be to use one of the replicas that I have already implemented in my always own environment in my data center. So at the end, you are going to have, let's say, two additional servers beside the primary. Basically, the, in your code, you need just only to modify the application intent equals red only, and your uh, the connection will be automatically redirected or one of the replicas, uh, the secondary replicas that you have in in, uh, in, your, uh, in your environment, okay? I, you have uh, here several uh, information about it. For example, for me, I think that we could highlight about the secondary replicas. They are going to have the same compute size as a primary. So if you choose four V cores uh, uh, in the business critical, you are going to have another three uh, sorry, uh, sorry, another replicas, two replicas uh, with, the uh, with the same size, size. Yeah, okay, and you could connect one of, the, one of the, uh, uh, these, uh, this uh, replicas. these replicas, okay? okay. Um, for sure, uh, for sure uh, uh, in order, one of the, one of the part that, part that as a DVA is very important is, is okay, okay, how, how to measure what is the resource usage that I have, that I have in my replica, okay? okay. In this case, in this case what, what uh, is one thing that Microsoft is working on right now, right now in order to provide to you uh, 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 as a DVA uh, 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 the query data store or uh, uh, another, another way, way in order to capture what is the resource consumption that you have. Right now, right now that is not possible, the replica. I mean, and in this case, for example, you need to use several DMVs in order to uh, know what is the resources uh, that you have in, in, in your replica. Okay. Okay? So, other things, as I mentioned before, about the escalation, you could scale up, scale down, up to uh, 80 V cores. If you need, you can modify it or change, scale up, scale down several times per day. At the end, you are going to pay by hours. And this is that the capacity that we have right now. For example, if I want uh, to use right now M series, uh, for example, uh, M series, right now I have 20 gigabyte, 29 gigabytes per V core. Okay, so uh, if you have 128 V core, okay, at the end you could have this amount of memory. Or uh, you could, uh, for example, uh, uh, in provision compute, at the end, you could have 48, uh, 400 8 gigabytes of uh, gigabytes of memory. So you could scale up, scale down, depending on your needs. Many customers right now, so DVA, they have a script that depending on the, the, the period of the day, for example, in the morning, they are going to scale down the server to, let's say, to 3 cores, 4 cores, and when they are going to start one hour before starting the, uh, the, the business day, they scale up. Eight, eight, five, or ten, or whatever you want. So at the end, you are going to uh, reduce the cost that you have uh, every day in the database. Okay. So in order to do this automatically, uh, we have one one thing that is called serverless. Okay. That automatically uh, after. For one hour, if you don't have any connections to your database, automatically SQL will uh, 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 pause, let's say, your database. Okay? So during this period, you are not going to be charged. Okay? And it's very important because at the end, uh, 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 for example, many customers are using this one in terms of developers or in terms of QA environments, uh, etc. So, 
this is the 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 uh, the main thing, the main uh, comparison between serverless. Uh, without specify, uh, let's say, when, uh, about the pause or uh, when you define how many because that you have. Finally, this is the last uh, slide that I have about uh, these things about hyperscale. Hyperscale is another mechanism that we have in order to uh, have more than 100 data, uh, up to, sorry, 100 terabytes of data. Okay. In order to manage all these things, the mechanism that, that, we, have, that we have behind the scenes it's, it's, it's something different, okay? At the end, you are going to have your compute nodes, and uh, all the data uh, will be managed by one thing that is called a page server. So every time that the compute nodes needs to retrieve data from uh, one specific uh, storage, they are going to connect to the page server, and they are going to obtain the data, okay? And at the end, uh, the most important thing that, that we have is uh, you don't need to modify anything in your code, okay? Uh, the only thing that you need to know is when you are in a hyperscale, that is not possible to scale down, for example, to uh, to the different database tier. You need to scale up, scale down, always using hyperscale. For example, for four uh, vCores, eight vCores, or go back to vCores, okay? So, and finally, this is the an example about the from uh, redundant, as I mentioned before, or, uh, it's very important to know that every time that you have uh, uh, this is, this uh, thorns, and the end you are going to have one copy of the primary here, another copy will be here, another uh, replica will be here. Okay, it's very it's very important to know. Okay, let me go back to the demo. Let me skip up. Uh, these things. Just only before go to the demo, I would like just only to mention two things. When, as in terms of summary, one we need to go to Azure SQL database. Okay, SQL database is when you are going to work. When the you, application is not, uh, they're going to use just only the database. Let's say database means uh, I'm going to connect to the database and, or another database, but it's independent. It's, we don't have any relation with other databases. In this case, you could use SQL database. Uh, my suggestion is to start with uh, vCore model, uh, model because at the beginning we have DTUs and we have several uh, situations that our customers didn't understand what that means DTU. So in this case, if you have eight vCores in your environment, try to use another eight vCores in this database. If you need more I.O., suppose that you have implemented everything and you detect that the data I.O. is very high or lack of local I.O. is very high, a business critical premium on a happy scale, um, they are going to have a, a different uh, latency or less latency that you have in the standard uh, or uh, general purpose in managed instance, okay? And also, if you want to save you money, use serverless, okay? So let me show you, I'm going to right now go to the demo. Uh, this is one application that I have uh, right now. Okay, uh, one thing that I used to work uh, very often with my de uh, developer is try to add internal telemetry data for us. Okay, it's very important because if you don't have this information as a DVA, you don't know what happened. Okay, for the reason, normally I used to recommend to the developers when you have this C sharp code, Java, PHP, etc., please try to add these, these things because right now I know that every time this is the time that this query is taking, okay? So, other things is about the portal. Suppose right now, this is the portal. This is my database.net example. So, I would like something happen because I received a call from the developers, from the customers, mentioned that I'm reaching right now, the, everything is running very slow. The first thing is, uh, if you don't want to use the portal, uh, for sure, you could use uh, this, uh, this, this DMV that you could know right now what happening in the database. Okay? For example, right now, as you could see, uh, I reached the 80% of the uh, of my database. I don't know what happened, and I need to identify the query in the similar way that we have in on premises. Okay? So I'm going to the portal. In the portal, uh, I have the way to try to identify what happened. If my problem 
is CPU, is I/O, or is a transaction I/O. So basically, what I need to do is to use add this metric, CPU percentage, for example, add a new metric about a data I/O percentage, or for example, a prior half. A log IO percentage. I, I could I, I click here, here uh, pin the dashboard. For example, I could pin this dashboard, uh, this uh, uh, report in the dashboard uh, in my uh, in my uh, main web page. So right now it's clear that something happened because, as you could see, uh, we have a high CPU. Okay. You could add you could add other metrics. For example, what happened in terms of uh, connections, in terms of file connections, in terms of active connection, dead log. So uh, it's very useful uh, for us uh, about to know what happened with my database, how many connections that I have, what happened about everything. So right now we identified right now the CPU. My problem is the CPU, but what happened? What happened? I, I, I need to create some uh, uh, indexes. Okay, okay. You, could use, you could use your SQL Server Management, management in Studio order in order to identify uh, uh, if you need the missing indexes or the typical query that we have, that we have in order to review the request and the main wait stats. stats or other option, other option that you have is go here and review, for example, the performance recommendations. Okay. As I mentioned before, when you enable this option, and the end, after 24 hours, 14 hours, you are going to start receiving some alerts or message about, okay, please try to create this index, try to drop this index because there is no need. And also, uh, in the automatic tuning, you could specify multiple things about force the plan uh, or create an index, etc. Okay, so, so <clears throat> one simple thing that I have right now is about the query performance inside QPI. So right now, so right now I have several uh, uh, green uh, var that mention that okay, the query that the query with code four three eight eight is taking around the ninety one percent all the time in the database. So I saw so that, that right now my SQL instance is reaching the 80% of the of the 89% uh, of, of the query. So right now, as you can see here, you have here the query. And one thing that is very important is you have the text of the query. So I have right now found, right now, what is the query? Uh, uh, that I need to, let's say, let's say investigate using, using the typical thing that we have in SQL Server on premises. Go to go to your SQL Server Manage Studio, Management Studio. Click the query. Let's say here, for example, we could create, declare name Barcar 100. Set name, for example. Equals, equals no, I don't know, um, um, fine. fine. Okay. okay. So you could so see, you could how, see much how much time took, or we, or we could enable the execution plan, plan, and we could start to uh, to analyze what happened with my execution plan. plan. I, I now, right now we have a warning message that. The issue, the issue is we have a convert implicit that is causing uh, uh, the performance problem in terms of CPU. Uh, in order to fix the problem, we could suggest to the developers try to modify uh, to Varkar and the, the time, uh, the execution and CPU usage will be bad. Forget it about this, just only an example. Uh, but I would like to show you one thing about uh, other things it's about uh, the, uh, the query with the statistics. The in the similar options uh, that, we uh, that we have in on premises. Basically, basically uh, if, you uh, if you want to uh, uh, review what happened with my database, basically, basically, basically you could need to go to the query with the statistics, review what is the main uh, weight stat uh, uh, that, you have, that you have. You could configure using custom time, time the, last the last hour, 30 days ago, 15, etc. And uh, right, right now, as you can see here, something, something happened with my CPU, right? right? In, the similar, in the similar way that we have in on-premises. In, uh, in this case, basically, I, basically I need to go uh, 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 to click in the, in the CPU bar, and I'm going to have right now 
the same query that I have. So something happened that I'm running an index scan. We have a convention implicit in the similar option that we have, similar bar that we have in on-premises. We have uh, the complete option, the execution that completed or canceled. Okay, so at the end, as you can see, it's the same that we have in on-premises, okay? Uh, other options, uh, other options that, that we have, uh, for example, uh, many questions that we receive uh, right now, it's about, uh, uh, I'm not able, for example, to, to see uh, the, all the queries that is running in my, in my application in SQL database. Well, you could use, for example, other tool, uh, Data Studio. If you install the plugin, it's called uh, Lance Profiler. So when I open this run profiler, we are, I'm going to create an extended event in the similar way that we have in on-premises and right now the query that is running in the similar way. So at the end, my 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 role in terms of DVA has not been changed because I'm doing the same. The most important thing is the tools that I have in order to complete all the steps these things. And for, for sure, other things that, as I mentioned before, is you have the SQL audit. Okay. So, so you could have all uh, the queries that is happening in your server. So at the end, the only thing that I know is I change the platform, but in, in terms of my day by day, my daily job, and the end has not been changed too much in, in, in this part. Okay. So for the reason, the most important thing is in terms of, of is, is in terms of uh, the, the option. We have other things. That I want. Sorry, I would like to show you other things that uh, I will like, sorry, let me go to the portal again, <clears throat> because uh, I know that we are out of time, but uh, it's about uh, other option that I think that is very important is, is, for example, the alerts. As you can see, in terms of database, you could add, for example, conditions. For example, when uh, my CPU reads one uh, first call, I'm going to receive an email. I'm going to do something. I'm going to scale up, scale down, or uh, other 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 options. And finally, other option that I think that is it's it's I think that is very useful is to use one thing that is called uh, diagnostic settings. Uh, as you can see here. Every uh, uh, query store room time statistics, every error, every timeouts, every, every blocks, every dead blocks, every weight statistics, automatically SQL, SQL, SQL Azure will send this function to one thing that is called log analytics workspace. And the end, the log analytics workspace is not more than another database that is called Custo that contains all this data. Okay, using Custo or using this uh, uh, this database, you have several uh, plugins in order to detect what happened with your database. For example, I have enabled for my SQL database an unmanaged instance. Uh, I could use uh, SQL Azure, and as you can see here, uh, uh, my database, as you can see, my CPU is 99%. Uh, uh, you know uh, uh, the dominant uh, weight type, type uh, the, uh, what, happened what happened in my uh, weight uh, types. For example, for example, if I have any error because I, I ran some mistake, mistake in terms of the this uh, object that exists, exist. uh, I have, uh, the, I have the, the message, I have a space about, about how is the database, the database metric, metric in terms of allocation, in terms of CPU, in terms of, CPU, in terms of physical data, data worker percentage. percentage. So at the so end, you have many, many reports that you could have. This is the most important thing as a DVA. Okay, try to use the resources that you need. I think that in terms of summary, this is very important about it. Okay, for the reason, uh, as I mentioned before at the beginning, of our role has been, uh, has been changed for several things. Uh, you don't need to review the backup, you don't need to have the high ability, you need to create this high ability, but uh, you have 
uh, to uh, to work in, in terms of performance. Um, in order to finalize the presentation, just only I would like to say something. It's this is the recommendations that every time that you have a new applications, uh, uh, we used to uh, share with the developers. Okay. For example, we have four phases. Four. Uh, that I use. It's about the, it's about the configuration. Very important, Very important as a DVA uh, in, uh, with your security team uh, about, uh, we, are about uh, we are going to use the port 1433 and in order to connect directly to the server that is running the database, we need to have open the port 11,000 until 11, uh, 12,000. Okay, prevention. This is the best practice. Please mention that use the latest version of ADO.NET or ODBC. It's very important. Use, if could be possible, contained user more than logins. For sure, it's possible, but it's my recommendation. In order to reduce the workload against the master, for example. Other things that is very important, connection pooling. Wow, it's really amazing when the developer use the connection pooling in terms of applications. Okay. For the reason, I'm going to leave this these things because it's very very important about when you are working with the developers. I mentioned one of the roles, one of the duty that we need to to work is to work with the developers. Okay. It's very important. Okay. Okay. Finally, the last slide is about. Uh, working in, in a hybrid uh, environment. For sure, there is no need to use, there is no need to, use, there is no need to migrate the data to, to VM or to Azure. You could use Azure. Okay. For example, uh, using a machine, a virtual machine, you could add one node and create a VM in Azure. So we could be part of the uh, of the always on environment, or for example, you could use the storage nature in order to place or to save the backup files. Okay. Other things that we have, it's about the tools. As a DVA, one of the duties that you are going is you are going to fight against multiple other actors. For example, Azure Data Factory more or less is SQL Server, integra SQL Server integration services, but doing other things. Okay, so most probably. Uh, Azure Data Factory will insert data against the database, I update the data, extract the data, etc. At the end, uh, it's very important to know how works uh, Azure Data Factory. Other things, it's important about Power BI. Yes, for sure. At the end, uh, these things are uh, many things. And finally, in terms of connectivity, if you want to connect to your server without uh, having the guarantee that uh, and, um, um, real bandwidth etc. My suggestion is to use a VPN on Express Route, okay, in order to connect to resources that you have in in in, in Azure. So, so uh, okay, this is the last slide. Okay, uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for an, uh, uh, for attending this session. I hope that all the information that I have was useful for you. As I mentioned before, in terms of summary, uh, don't think that. Uh, the moving the data to Azure, uh, your duty or you're going to lose your job or you don't need to do multiple things. things. No, you need to do, you need to do let's, say let's say the same without, without using, without, without let's say backups and high ability. ability. But at the end, you monitor, need to monitor, you need to run the performance, performance work in multiple okay. things. Okay. And and um, that's all for today. Thank you so much, Kevin. Oh, thank you. Um, can you show the last slide? Yeah. yeah. Perfect. I know Curtis asked for that. Um, I know um, you're going to send me the these slides or send yes. me a link. Yes. Perfect. Yes, I'm going to. I'm going to. Perfect. All right. So we do have one final question. Uh, is there a cost associated with enabling the monitoring options like log analytics, workspace, etc.? Uh, yes, we have uh, we have a cost. I don't know exactly how much is this. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, but it's not uh, it's not too much. Okay. Depending on uh, depending on the. The, uh, the, the, the resources that you need, but it's not too much. I don't, I don't know exactly, but I could find for you. Find for you. This, uh, this one. Perfect. 
So that is it for today. There are no more questions. So we will wrap this up. And everyone remember, we will actually be putting this, the um, presentation out on uh, DBA FunTube here in the next few days. Um, so you can review it. I know I'm going to review uh, some of these things as well. Even if I am in managed instance at the moment, I would like to know a little bit more about it and probably can find some different ways I need to use the presentation itself. Uh, so with that, thank you, Jose, very much for this presentation. It has been very, very helpful. And I'm sure thank, you so thank you so much. Thank you so much for Kevin for this invitation. I'm really very proud and honored to deliver this session. Thank you so much for everything. All right. Thank you all so much. Have a great day. See y'all next week. Bye.